Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Tua, the Dolphins, Week 11, finding a way to win. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the quarterback school Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. It's a great way to support the channel and you get even more quarterback school content. So if you're interested, hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. The link is in the video description. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Tua, the Dolphins finding a way to get a win week 11 right here. What the Dolphins would call sexy timing. <laughs> Hard knocks. Pretty good in season. Get us going. A lot of Reek, a lot of Tua, a lot of McDaniel right here, right over the top of Lord Helmet. Again, beautiful execution here. Nobody uses motion quite like these guys do. What I'm going to call just a glance in the West Coast world, we're going to let that thing go with capital A anticipation. So no, not only, it's one thing for it to be capital A anticipation. It's another to bold it, to underline it, to increase the font like we do for Tua all the time. The thing that's crazy with this one for me is the ball handling. So he reverses out. He then extends the ball with his right hand. He then has to get the ball back to his left hand, hit that fifth step, and throw with anticipation. So it's not just casual drop back. This is play action anticipation. And this isn't like a typical like easy little drift play fake from gun. This reverse out. Extend the arm, and again, watch when he lets this in go. Right? I mean, come on. <laughs> and again, my guys, Lord Helmet here with the dark visor coming downhill. Get all these guys coming downhill. It creates that window. Beautiful job. Again, you utilizing their speed with the horizontal motion. Beautiful. And they just went to work on these inbreakers early in this game. But I really love... The ball handling. Watch this ball extend right. One, two, three, four, five. Out. <laughs> I'll slow it down just so we can all understand it and let it wash over you. Right hand. One, two, three, four, five. All his cleats in the ground. Right over lowered helmet. Beautiful. Right up on his face. Big chunk. Let's go. Next one. Another beautiful inbreaker. Tyreek Hill. He's the new number one right now. Standing on the 40. Again, playing with. Unreal anticipation, and this is pure Jets. Absolute acceleration out the catch. Still running fast after he scores. Just an absolute thing of beauty. This acceleration right here, world class. Again, I think it's, you know, as we get into this video, we'll talk a little bit about potentially how teams are going to try to stop them. I thought the Chiefs did a decent job of if they're going to line Tyreek Hill up and not have him be the guy in motion moving around, I really think you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't get somebody up in his way. And I'm not saying you're going to jack him at the line of scrimmage every time, but you just can't let him, in my opinion, have these free runs where he just accelerates and then accelerates and then accelerates away and he never gets touched. I think you got to try to get your hands on him. I'm not sure it would matter right here. Again, beautiful glancy-ish, wrap-in-ish, playing with, again, world-class anticipation. You know, it, it sounds like a broken record here early on. But the anticipation and the accuracy, just simply world class. There's not a better combo working right now with the anticipation and the accuracy. Again, two is separated right there. Tyree kills on the top of the, the bottom of the three. Catch that thing inside the numbers. Damn near on the college hash. Am I the only person, and I'll save it for the end zone shot, but am I the only person, I probably am, who thinks that these college pro hybrid fields look like, like I always think of train spotting, like it looks like heroin tracks to me. It's just me. Okay. Sometimes I go off the rails, but there's too many hashes. <laughs> I see too many tracks. My landmarks get all sideways on me. Maybe it's just the recovering coach in me, but there's a lot of hashes out there. A lot of train tracks, too many tracks for me. Awesome acceleration right here. World-class. Love it. Next one here, third and eight. Another beautiful inbreaker. This time to Tyreek Hill again down here to the bottom of the screen. He's going to be the number one. 
Now this was a little bit of a unique route at the top for me. This is three and a hitch. Again, world-class anticipation. It really is. The anticipation makes this thing go. And then just the Jets doesn't even come close to getting tackled. <laughs> just different. Built different out there. Right up on his face. Hell of a catch. Great strength. <laughs> Again, the change of direction, the acceleration. Just nobody else in the league like that. The reason I say it's a little bit different route-wise here is because normally I would say you would want to play true kind of West Coast glance world. We're going to come up here and hit this thing like this. This is like three and no hitch, especially to a crazy fast guy. This route to me, he comes up and kind of chops it at the top and almost like bends it in. Makes me think it's more any than anything else. It really doesn't matter for our purposes. The anticipation is bananas. Again, it's not like he's throwing... And it's a wide open window here, and there aren't, you know, peppered. It looks like there's Raiders all over the place. He's just throwing this on time, trusting his guy to do what he's supposed to do and be where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. And that's exactly what happens. I mean, it's just awesome. One more time, I'll pause it at the top here. One, two, three, tight hitch. He's throwing it right there. <laughs> I mean, just awesome. Great use of speed, space, timing, details, nuance, and certainly accuracy and anticipation. Again, from the back, you can see the footwork lined up to the right. One, two, three, boom, tight hitch. Again, the timing of this, love how Tua gets the ball out of his hand quickly. Tight reset, balls out, good pass protection right up on his face. And again, just rough tackling on the back end, but man, that's that dude is different. Next one here, this is one the Dolphins probably wish they had back, both Tua and McDaniel. I think Tua, if he had to do it over again, would just hand this ball over. This to me is a PRO, RPO, however you want to classify it. I think he's just looking numbers matchup out there. It's not a post-snap read. And fourth and one, I love the idea of getting the ball to your best player. I really do. So it's hard for me to be that mad at it. And again, at the snap here, you know, throw it to your best player. That's usually a really good recipe for things to be successful. Now, if we're running, let's just say that's inside zone, it probably gets a first down. It's fourth and one. The other part about this is you'd love this number two up here, this wide receiver. He's blocking MDM, most dangerous man. And it looks like he just, you know, makes a wrong guess. So first of all, it's not easy because he's got to look at the snap. So he's taking his eyes off of the kind of target location. Then he comes off. And looks like he wants to go inside first, but that guy's not a threat. Then by the time he goes outside, the corner has already beat him around the corner and makes the tackle. He makes a nice play. They get paid too. So that's the first thing. Now, I, and again, if he had to do it over again, I'm sure McDaniel would just say, hey, run it. Now, the thing that will come off of this, okay, I'm calling it right now. Put it in the bank. You're welcome. Friday. Black Friday. If they do this, you better buy a course. They're going to come out here. They're going to fake this thing. Okay, so we're going to get this bluff seam. Okay, so now that's not necessarily a new play. So come out, to a pumps this thing, bluff, and this is the number one. But the number two off of this and where it's going to score is we're going to bluff this thing like a bubble, and then we're going to accelerate to the fade. So it's like a delayed wheel, but it's not a true wheel. It's more off the bubble. So you come in like you're going to fake this screen, coming in hard, ah, ah, ah. or you come out, pedal like it's going to be a bubble. So bring them in. Then the actual screen here, back like a bubble. You don't get it. You get both these guys to come downhill like they're going to come make this play. Like they watch film. They want to come make a hero play. And then we're going to hit it to the bubble. Hit it down the side to on the fade. So you'll get the bluff slant and the bluff fade. You're welcome, McDaniels. Put it in. I know it's McDaniel. Quit freaking out. He won't put it in, but it would be a good play. You can see it right here. So the bluff slant would probably be there, but maybe the safety takes it away. The bluff bubble Fade would definitely be there. The run would also be there. Next one here, third and 10, falls in the 11. Just an unreal call here versus pressure. Beautiful offensive play calling, world-class design. You know, I think it's pretty cool that the center goes out and kind of traps the edge player who's peeling on the back, but I'm not sure five makes that tackle regardless. <laughs> that might score, walk in regardless. It's cooler that the center pulls out and traps him. What's going on here is we're getting hit with a zero. So we're getting safety blitz. 
we've got that look what I'm used to calling birds on a fence where you get all these guys across on the same lane we're going to get hit with zero so blitz blitz they're essentially asking this edge player to peel and cover the back so whatever the back does to this side he's got to cover him one-on-one now you you're hopeful that it's not down the field because you're bringing zero but he sets out like he's going to run like a wide or a swing puts his foot in the ground and then comes back on a little like angle screen and to make matters even worse this edge player who's already terrified that he's got to tackle a back in space or cover a back in space we've got a center who's coming out and he's going to trap him and it's essentially a walk in from there just a beautiful play call first here we'll watch that pressure watch that safety in the middle of the field he's coming down through the tracks there it is zero watch the back peel off down here and five peel with him like oh oh god <laughs> was not anticipating the center essentially trap blocking me Whoop. that is such a great play call awesome job big time touchdown third and long in the red zone to have this thing in your back pocket dialed up burst pressure too awesome again just watch that center one more time you got to lose with dignity here you can't just let them run free. Lose with dignity. Get out there. Seal it. Walk in. Hell yeah. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already. Please like. Subscribe. Hit the bell. Get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you doing all of that for the video and the channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community. Great way to support the channel and get even more Quarterback School content. We also have quarterback school courses. Now, these courses are the most in-depth content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. The courses are on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. How to beat every coverage is the best-selling course. We even have an entire offensive system and framework available for you. So hop over there and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check out those all linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video... Let's get back to it. Next one here. First play call to start the second half. Not how you want to start it with a big interception here. And I think the bummer part is, is this is a throw I think Tua makes the vast, vast majority of the time. And it's a significant miss because it's not close. And it's one of those throws where, you know, I think Tua has essentially gotten past the kind of deep ball accuracy concerns. But a throw like this, you know, it just looks uncharacteristically un -Tua. We're going to go play action here. They love this like whirly bird kind of ball handling here. Where we're going to fake this way to a turns his back. We pull the guard. It looks like we're trying to get Tyree kill here on what I'm probably call a drift. Maybe that's an any, you know, some inbreaker right here. That's not there. So they do a good job covering that thing up. We've got the safety right down here now on the backside. We're running like a big post back the other way. And really he can lay this thing out anywhere over here. Talk about this quite a bit on the channel. What you can't do is throw it on the opposite side of wherever he sets the stem. So once this thing is declared, like he is running on that line, do not miss over here. You can miss anywhere over here. And there's a lot of space to lay this thing. So in my opinion, he just lays this thing a little too far upfield as opposed to letting him carve that thing down. And again, I'm not saying it's easy to see, but for these guys, it kind of has been. <laughs> again, is Tyreek there to start? No. The safety's right in the lane. Boop. No. So from there, Tua sees Waddle running across. Now maybe he lets it go a tick early. You know, Tua's throwing that thing right there. You know, who knows where Waddle's running. I wish he would, you know, instead of hitching, hitching up into trouble, just hang back there, let that thing develop. And again, you can see Waddle kind of flatten it. So Waddle feels the safety. Waddle feels that safety right here. So he then kind of takes what I would consider a flatter post angle here. But Tua has already thrown the ball. The ball's in the air. So he's already thrown it way back here. He's anticipating him to get to whatever that landmark is. And he's playing a little bit more Kelsey-ish. Where we're just kind of running to space. And it's not that one way is you know right and the other way is wrong. But when the ball's in the air, like the ball's right there, we can't be doing this down the field. So they're either not on the same page, the expectations aren't the same, the details aren't quite locked in there, or Waddle just carves that thing off. But again, you, I can totally see what Waddle sees here. There's nobody down here to the bottom, but Tua's already thrown the ball, and now he's got to adjust back. So it's, it's just funky as far as what they're not being on the same page for this shot. 
And again, I personally would love Tua to not hitch up, hitch up into trouble. If he just hangs back there, again, easier said than done. But we've got multiple guys on the game record, 98. You got a chance for a big play there. And again, you can see the angle that he's running. If he just throws it on that angle, and again, I'm acknowledging the fact that the ball's already in the air, okay? But if you throw it on that angle and miss over here, this is a big play. And they make these types of plays all the time, it seems like, in Miami. Just not quite on the same page there as far as timing and the route angle coming out of that thing at the top. And that's the result. Just basically a punt. Next one here, second and eight. Tyree Kill being Tyree Kill at the top of the screen just on a deep out. Again, whirly bird footwork. Unreal anticipation. <laughs> Hilarious separation. I mean, rightfully so. Those guys are terrified of his speed, as they should be. But man. Tua throwing this thing with great anticipation, ripping that thing wide open, right? I mean, the thing that I love that this offense does is they allow these guys to be the best version of themselves. And what I mean by that is this dude has unreal speed. Let him eat. Vertical, 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 spin out of it. This corner is terrified. He was running out of there. I'll pause it at the top of the thing. There's no one around him by five yards. And you couple that with the anticipation that Tua plays with. And again, these aren't just like little slant throws, right? It's one thing to play, you know, a drift post with anticipation. It's another to rip it to the wide side of the field on a go ball that then turns into a deep out. I mean, that thing, he is trying to make that thing look like he is going vertical. Look how fast he's going up top, even in slow motion. Separates right there, Tua. Look at Tyreek Hill, not even at the four yet. And then watch the separation at the top of this route. <laughs> I mean, almost runs 24 out of the screen. You just don't see separation like that damn near anywhere else, let alone on a deep route like this. With the anticipation, I mean, just special. Awesome connection. And again, I love how they utilize them. So early on, a lot of inbreakers. Later on, Tua can throw this thing outside the numbers, driving it from the far hash all the way across the field. Big chunk, let's go. Next one here, third and eight. I think this is one of those ones Tua would love to have back. I think this is one that he's shown this year he can make this play. Just a little bit of extend the play, be creative, add a structure, find a way to find your guy down the field for a third down. You know, I get it. He's got Crosby bearing down on him right here. But that's a throw I think he would expect to make, give his guy a little bit better of a shot. Now, I know we got some hurdy hands during this game. This, to me, is what I think of as when I think of how the league is going to try to handle some of this speed on the perimeter. So they're essentially saying, we're not going to give you a free access. We're not going to let you just run back there like it's routes on air. So we're up. I think we're running like a little mini shake here. It's there. This, again, too, has shown the ability to extend plays just enough. And this is one of those instances for me where the way he's been playing this year, normally just enough is good enough. Right here, it's not. And I think I feel like Tua just a little bit off, specifically in the second half. Felt like things came off a little sideways and things were harder than they should have been. And again, I get it. You don't have Tyreek Hill out there for some of these reps. It's not quite the same. They're trying to jack with your timing on the perimeter. Not quite the same. But again, for me this year, Tua has shown, for the most part, that he has been able to extend a little bit. Up, out, uh, so close. Next one here, third and one. This is one of those plays I feel like is just a staple with this offense. I'm going to call this an RPO. I'm actually going to acknowledge the fact, and I don't pretend to have all the answers anytime, let alone with this high level of an offense. But there are many times in this game that they were running this where I felt like this was almost more of a naked as opposed to their traditional, what I'm used to calling post-wheel flat. And so what I mean by that is I think universally this play is described as a first level RPO where we're reading the C-gap player. We're going to run some iteration of like a settle slant or post here that can settle up. There's someone in the wheel and then there's someone coming across on that sneak flat or hide or slide. Now there are not, there just aren't a lot of humans on the planet that can read first level RPOs where we're reading the C-gap player and throw multiple throws here. So whether they read it out, one, two, 
three, or Tua just kind of uses his vision to see the space of it. Or sometimes I think it might just be a true naked, and he just plays it quickly from here. They do it so often. And the thing that makes it confusing for me is that the offensive line in the run blocking unit, because we're, we're kind of run blocking here, kind of, I feel like there has to be some sort of vocal call that the back is giving when he gets the ball. And or maybe when he doesn't get the ball. There has to be some level of communication because they're coming off hard. They're charging. We definitely have the potential to run block here. He's not running a route. So there's a run unit, but they have this great ability to stay at the line of scrimmage here. There's got to be some sort of like vocal call. So maybe somebody has it on the audio somewhere. I don't know, but it's really cool to see. And it does create this kind of space. Like look at the space for Waddle. That's bananas. Third and one. But again, watch the line of scrimmage. Those guys on the right side, they're coming off pretty hard. That doesn't look like like true, like naked, where you get elephants on parade and guys are just going sideways. And again, I, I can't stress how difficult it is to do a first-level RPO, meaning we're reading someone at the line of scrimmage and we're throwing the ball down the field to multiple potential reads. And again, you know, there, there really are two guys there. So I'm, I'm not even sure. In the, and this is why I say that it's it's more of a feel thing than anything. Because this space here, technically, this guy is not blocked. That's, a to me, a four technique. The, the left tackle is leaving him. He's going on his track here. He's not really leaving him. He's, he's kind of coming this way. But he's unblocked. So if we were to hand this thing off, we really have two guys. We have a guy surfing here. And we have an unblocked player in the seat. Two in the seat. So, you know, maybe it's just beyond my level of understanding football, how they're exactly doing this. And again, you know, I, I do, there's got to be some sort of like verbal cue. Or it's just a true naked keeper and we're just burning 11 on the backside. I can't imagine that's the case though. I'd be fascinated to know if somebody knows. Somebody asked, man, there's got to be some sort of audio somewhere about what they yell or communicate or talk about that play because there's just nobody better at it. All right, next one here. Turnover worthy play, in my opinion. This is a little bit of the Crosby effect. We let Lauren Helmet here make a play on this kind of in break or glance ish route. Really, probably should be an interception. That guy, 41, is a ball magnet. It's one of those things where, and I'll talk about kind of the rules of this thing, but it's one of those things where you would anticipate this just looks uncharacteristically untua. And I, I think the design of the play doesn't help as well. And so what I mean by that is you get in this type of formation in the league and many people think you're going to get double chip. Okay, so you're going to get chip and chip a lot, especially when this guy is kind of a defensive North Star and you need to know where he is on every single play. He can wreck a game. Okay, so when you get, eventually, with the motion out here, you get three eligibles up here, two eligibles down here. Now, the ball's in the middle of the field. In some iteration of Tampa, where you're going to get split field coverage, in the Mike linebacker type, Lord Helmet, Spaceballs, you're welcome for that. He's going to run to the middle. I would say most teams will have him run to the three eligible side or open to the three side. So you wouldn't open to the two eligibles, you'd open to the three eligibles. So when he opens that way, it's then going to make this throw a little bit harder. Does that make sense? So if if you were to do the same concept, but have him go this way, have the back go this way, and have helmet go this way, then I feel like this is a better throw. Now again, then it won't impact the underneath, but this is all happening because of kind of the gravity of this cat right here. And the world, you know, everything has to be like, we got to have a plan, we got to have a plan, we can't let him wreck the game. So it's all of those things together make this a really muddy, turnover-worthy type play. So again, three eligibles up top, 41 reading to his eyes, he open into the left. Again, open into the three eligibles. That might not even be true Tampa. Just open in that way, reading Tua the whole way. And I feel like Tua is so good usually at using his eyes. And we can see his helmet stripe to see exactly where he's looking, right? He's staring to the right. Just uncharacteristically, very undude, right? Just 
I mean, 41 is just staring at Tua. He's giving him that throw. Now, if he had a smaller helmet, he probably makes that play. Visor doesn't help, though. Looks cool. Next one here, third and seven. We're going to work Waddle down here, the number one, as he shifts down to this like loose or dirty bunch. He's going to go in on the switch release and then out on the sail or out. And we just throw a, slide, a sinker. Now, that's a throw that I would imagine Tua would love to have over. I feel like Tua has done so much better with kind of showcasing his arm strength to be able to make these types of throws. I know someone's running right at him. But that's a throw I feel like Tua would expect to make consistently. And again, I really like the design here. I know I keep saying that. But this idea being that we're going to run what I'm going to call a switch release. So this, the one and the two switch. So Tyree Kill becomes the outside kind of clear. Waddle then, as he switches in, he's going up and out. And we're going to get the number three on a flat. So it's essentially just a flood concept, but how they get there with the switch and the loose, dirty bunch muddles this thing on the defense. And it's not a big window, but that's a window to a accurate to a throwing darts to a, I think it makes the vast majority of the time right here. He just doesn't, he's not playing his best game. Again, that, that thing just dies on him a little bit and I get it. There's a little stunt right in front of you with a TE, but man, When's he let that thing go? And playing with anticipation, ball just dies on him just a tick. And I get it. It's 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 muddy out there, right? You see a lot of black jerseys. But man, that is so close to being a nice play. And it's one of those things where, you know, a couple of these throws bring up, you know, that two arm strength thing that I feel like has subsided quite a bit. But you see throws like this sometimes, and again, he's not helping himself because he's backing up. And I get it why you're backing up because you've got a defensive end running right at you. But man, that is close to being a really cool design play, big time third down conversion. Really, it's a four point play. Next one here, another big deep out to Tyree Kill, this time bottom of the screen, off the play action, split flow to an in rhythm. Driving the ball down the field, again, showcasing that arm strength. Now, I would say, you know, a little clicky here as far as the lower half. But if he's got a feel, he's got to rip something in to get this thing down the field. I get it, making sense of how he was thrown at this game. This is one of those things, again, for me, that at this point, if you're going to give this guy free access to just run right at you, you're going to be terrified. So these deep ends, deep, 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 and then breaking these things out versus free access, essentially one-on-one -on -one outside the numbers, are going to be there forever, especially if you can play with any, any hint of anticipation. And again, Tua does it, in my opinion, with the anticipation as well as anybody playing. Again, look when he lets that thing go. <laughs> Capital A, bold, underlined. Look at the separation that Tyreek Kill creates at the top. You don't think this corner and safety are terrified? Whoop. I mean, he catches it with no one around him for five yards. It's crazy. That's just what, that's the skill set, the speed, the acceleration, the change of direction that he has. And Tua doing a nice shot, putting it right up on his face, driving the ball down the field outside the numbers. Next one here, third and one. Again, four-point play here. We're going to throw a sinker back across to this kind of like seal late, late flat. And it's just unfortunate because Tua has time. He could probably set his feet and throw this thing. But again, just some of these plays with where you're like, man, I mean, those are the reason people kind of have arm strength issues. And I mean, the film is the film. That's a throw. I'm not saying it's an easy throw rolling to your left like that coming all the way back across. But it's, it's, it's a throw I think Tua and everybody with the Dolphins would expect him to make. So we're going to come off. We're going to seal the edge. Okay, third and one. Now you can make the argument again. Could we run it on some of these short yardage plays? Probably. But this isn't there. There's a flat defender out there, so we can't get the ball to Tyree Kill. The fullback type here, he's going to then just kind of settle in this space. So just kind of settle here for a first down. Tua, not my favorite ball handling coming out. Again, no one's immediate, immediately there as a threat. I think he could set up and make this throw. Again, easy for me to say with a marker and a clicker. 
But even if it's on the run, this is not a far throw. This is a throw to a Dolphins fan should expect him to make. Again, what is it, 15 yards? Sinker. You know, just unfortunate. They do a good job covering this thing. Tyreek Hill coming across. No. Yes to the late flat. It's there. It's a good design. It's aggressive play call. And we just throw a sinker. Again, it's just one of those things where the second half of this, once we got away from those big in-breaking chunks of this game, everything felt difficult. Last one here, second and 15. I've heard people say that Tua struggles when he gets off the first read. I've never necessarily came to that conclusion. I feel like these types of throws, like, yes, this is an incomplete throw. Okay, we'd love to have a completion. Yes, this is probably living on the edge. But I want you to just let this accuracy wash over you. Look at this throw. I mean, that's the flat defender. We're throwing it over. And it's right where it needs to be. Now, is he able to keep his feet in bounds? No. Does it take him out of bounds? Yes. But, I mean, that's not like a never in history ball. That's a ball potentially, you know, you'd love your Tyreek Hill to be able to somehow fight and try to keep his feet down. It just doesn't happen right there. It's not always going to happen. But, man, the accuracy there is just, it's as good as anybody playing. So, for me here, the read looks like they're trying to get this drift post off the play action coming downhill right at it. That's not there. Then you end up getting this, like, comeback past the sticks. And what happens here is that when this isn't there initially, so we don't get the initial drift, the second level does a nice job because it's second and 15, right? So, they're going to get a nice job coming down, getting depth, taking that thing away. The flat defender then, so right here, the flat defender, when this first initial drift post isn't there with the linebackers getting depth, taking it away, we have Tyree Kill coming in motion, running that kind of like motion comeback deep down the field. Well, this flat defender does a hell of a job of getting to the flat, then realizing where he's at and getting depth and making that a really difficult throw. So it's good defense. The league will continue to try to find ways to take these throws away. I love them moving 10 around. But this is a good example for me of Tua going one to two. Like, yeah, it's not a completion. So it looks empty, but this is a ridiculous throw. <laughs> so it's one of those things. This is what watching the film reveals. You can see the talent, the ability for him to put this exactly where he wants. He's throwing darts out there when he's in time, on rhythm, or on time and in rhythm, depending on if you enjoy syntax. Look at that throw. <laughs> but again, out of bounds. Nothing fell easy in the second half. And I, I feel like the league just continues to kind of find ways to make this, you know, Dolphins team struggle a little bit when they get up and they make life difficult on the speed on the perimeter. So that is a wrap. Tua, the Dolphins, finding a way to win. They were certainly rolling early, getting the ball to the Cheetah all over the place, using his acceleration dynamic route running, love the inbreakers. I actually loved how they got to a bunch of throws outside the numbers with him as well. Certainly going to have to start incorporating more and more guys into this offense as the league continues to kind of semi-fine ways to slow this group down. They just have so much speed on the perimeter, and they do so many unique things with how they use motion, the route combination, some of the RPOs, that it is really unique across the landscape of the league, in my opinion. But Tua, for whatever reason, was just out of sorts not near as consistent as probably he has been for the vast majority of the year. And you saw just a little bit of like some of that like arm strength stuff creep into some of those throws where we're throwing sinkers, where we're normally throwing the ball with pinpoint accuracy right on someone's face. And when that happens, everything gets just a little bit harder. So we'll just look to see if they can bounce back and be a little bit more precise in what they're doing, incorporate a few more guys as well, maybe get that run game going a little bit more. All of those things, regardless, it's nice to learn and win and not play well at the same time. You don't want to lose and have to learn those lessons. So Dolphins certainly going in the right direction. We'll see what it looks like moving forward. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.